Well hello and welcome to another episode of MMT Ed Q&A. Thanks for joining us and thanks to all of those who keep submitting questions. We're trying to get to them as best we can. Tonight my special guest is Warren Mosler and I caught up with him from St Croix in the Virgin Islands. Okay Warren, here's a question from Troy and it's a US centric question. Warren Mosler tells us that if you pay your taxes in cash at the IRS office, the Inland Revenue Service office, they give you a receipt and shred the cash. Taxes don't fund spending per se is the implication. But what happens if an IRS agent, instead of shredding the cash, carried it across the street and handed it to another government agency for spending, say, for, say the Environmental Protection Agency? Can you explain the difference, if any, from an accounting perspective? Okay, well, from an economic perspective, there's no different than if they had, and then, by the way, they don't shred it themselves. They send it to another company that shreds it. Right. It would make no difference if they shredded it and then took, which they do, and then take fresh bills off the, you know, a different pile and use those for the other agency to spend. So the accounting's exactly the same. Everything's the same when the, uh, Treasury spends, the Fed uh, debits its account, credits the other person's account. If they, they don't spend in cash, but they could, uh, first the Treasury would have to buy the um, uh, cash from the Fed. The Fed would deliver all this cash to the office of the Treasury to a car, I guess, armored car. And then they would debit the Treasury's account, reduce the balance in the account. And then the treasury would deliver it to whoever was going to get it. And that person would presumably put it in his bank account. And so the treasury would then increase the, the money in that person's bank account. So, yeah, but the accounting is just after the fact record keep. It's how they keep track of it. It has no effect on, on the economy or whatever. It's just how the government keeps track of things for posterity. Yeah, I get a lot of emails from people saying, oh, yes, but... Uh... The central bank has these uh, are constrained by processes where it's all very well to say they're typing numbers into bank accounts when governments spend, but the reserve, yeah. say the Reserve Bank of Australia, has legislative processes where they've got to have numbers in another account, for example, tax the tax account before they can put numbers in another account. Doesn't mean doesn't that mean that taxes fund government spending? Yeah, look, they also have to wait for the clock to turn over. Let's say they're allowed to spend on Tuesday and it's Monday. They can't spend today. They have to wait till tomorrow. So they're all following instructions all the time. Yeah. And that's, that's a whole different thing than um, being op what I call operationally constrained. It's not like they go to change the number in the account and they get an electric shock or something. They just <laughs> get slapped on the wrist for making a mistake or violating a policy. <laughs> so, yeah, they, sure, government has constraints. They have budgets. They say, we're only going to spend this much on the military. We're only going to spend this much on public health. That doesn't mean they don't not able to spend more if they decided to. That's very different than having to ask somebody else for the money. Yeah. Now, the other thing about um, shredding the money, you know, I made that point, and the point was made to show that the government is different from the rest of us. It's not to show that you don't need to tax anybody to be able to spend. That wasn't the point. Of it. it got turned into that. But when I originally came up with it, I said, look, you don't think there's something different going on. Who else, if you give them some money, will send it to a shred? Not your local government, okay? Not your grocery store. If I give you, you know, $100,000 in cash, you're going to throw it in a shredder? No. But the government does. So the point is that there's something very different going on with government. And the difference is they're spending first and then collecting the money and then throw it away. Now, the, the place that actually does that would be the football stadium. They sell you a ticket might be worth $1,000 to the game. You walk up to the gate, give it to the guy, and what does he do? He tears it up. Says, why would he tear up a $1,000 ticket? Well, it's used up. It's gone. Everybody knows why he tears up the ticket for the movie theater. So it was just to make that point, the difference between issuer and user. What the government does require are tax liabilities. They, without this, the tax liabilities that cause people to become sellers of goods and services, labor, in order to, to work, to get the money, okay, now the government can hired people, pay them, and, and then the tickets, the dollars are returned to the government in taxes. So the, the actual payment of taxes is kind of the last part of the chain. First part is the government wants you to work for the government, so they put a tax liability on it. They create unemployment. They create a person now who needs paid work and can't find it. 
because the government's the only place for the money to pay taxes. They then go to the government, they get paid, and then they can pay the taxes and it gets thrown away. So it's just looking at the cycle uh, right way around instead of wrong way. Around. Right, that's good. So, Troy, I hope that answers your question. Okay, that's it for tonight. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be back next week with more questions and hopefully some more interesting answers. In closing, I just want to thank all of those who have made donations to MMT Ed so far. We really appreciate that and thank you. MMT Ed relies on public donations to build our capacity and to get us in a position where we can offer courses free of charge to the general public. We hope to start floating courses in September of this year. So if you can help, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Until next week, see you later.